I'm delighted to visit today with Dr. Jeff Gershman, who is director of the Wind Ensembles at Capital University. We are thrilled in Dallas that you're able to come down for the great tradition of the 4th of July. It's an annual concert. It's done on the 4th of July in the heat of the Texas day. So coming into the gorgeous Meyerson Symphony Center is a is a relief in every way, of course. Yeah, um, and it's always a blast. This concert, there's no other way to describe it. It's music of all kinds with an emphasis on patriotic music and its community, it's, it's joy. And you are going to put in this program as conductor, you're going to put quite an interesting spin on it, your, your narrative for the program. Can you tell us a little bit about what you plan to do? Yeah, sure. So with each of these 4th of July programs I've been lucky enough to do with Dallas, we try to create some sort of narrative. Um, so you do get the patriotic music that you love, but there's a little bit more, we hope, depth to the program uh, to get a, kind of just a deeper understanding and a deeper uh, connection. And so I love the 4th of July uh, because it's one of those few holidays that every American gets to celebrate. And so that's why we like weaving these narratives in. So this year, it's all about the music of World War II. 2019 is the 80th anniversary of the beginning of the war and the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And so the idea was, let's look back at the music that was popular around that time and introduce it to many and reintroduce it to some and just kind of create an atmosphere of what was going on musically and culturally around that time. So we're actually even going to do it almost in a chronological way. So we're going to organize the concert in a couple of different kind of subsets. We'll start with the music of uh, the Great Depression, so the music before we went to war. And we'll do some Gershwin in that set and a little bit of Yellow Rose of Texas and Gene Autry as well. Uh, and then we'll feature the music of our allies as well, some of the music from Britain, some music from the Soviet Union. Uh, and then at the heart of the program, we're going to delve into big band jazz, which was tremendously popular at the time. And um, enough so that it was actually a really integral part to winning the war. The U.S. government 100% understood that swing music was a really, really big deal. And it was used to raise a lot of money towards the war effort in the same way that the government kind of asked Sousa to do the same thing in World War One. Same thing was asked of jazz musicians since World War II. Band leaders like Artie Shaw and Glenn Miller actually gave up lucrative careers in the States and came over and led service bands that did hundreds of concerts. It just served to kind of inspire the troops and inspire the people back home. And this is the crazy part, I found out in my research, was propaganda. Miller himself was actually did a German uh, program broadcast into enemy territory to try to raise kind of sympathy and acceptance of the American way using swing music. So all of that, we're, we're going to try to kind of recreate the feeling and the popularity of that with a Glenn Miller set. Uh, and then we'll kind of finish that first half with uh, patriotic music, uh, music like Battle Hymn uh, of the Republic and This Is My Country and of course, God Bless America. Uh, and then for the second half, we'll, I think one of the, the long forgotten elements is Yes, we think about the military battles and we think about the victory, but we don't think about the, the separation that had to happen and the sacrifice that the soldiers made and also the families made. So we'll feature music that was written to really highlight that. Uh, A Nightingale Sang in Barclays Square, When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again, and then finally Over the Rainbow to kind of represent what was waiting for them at the end of the war, this better life.